according to this count, uh, more than 75,000 men, mostly men, but um, some women, were in experiments lasting from anywhere from one to 12 years. All the subjects were West American or Western. They all used hard endpoints. Um, and in the end, none of these trials could support the diet heart hypothesis, which is to say that none of these trials could show that if you reduced your saturated fat content, usually it was halved um, from 18%, which was considered normal consumption, down to 9% of your calories as saturated fat. If you halved your, fat your saturated fat consumption and replaced your saturated fat with polyunsaturated vegetable oils, which is what we're told to do today, it would have absolutely no effect on whether or not you died of a heart attack. And it would have no effect on total mortality. It was true that these trials could reduce total cholesterol. So it was true that they could bring down your total cholesterol. First it was total cholesterol and later on when we could measure the subfractions, LDL and HDL cholesterol, that you could see that the, the saturated fat reduction could lower LDL cholesterol. But that made no uh, that had no impact on their, the ultimate outcome, which was whether or not people died of a heart attack, cardiovascular mortality. So these effectively, we never say disprove in science, because <laughs> maybe you could do another set of clinical trials on 75,000 people um, that, show, that, show, that support the diet heart hypothesis. But given the evidence to date, we cannot say that saturated fat and dietary cholesterol cause death from heart disease. So Ms. Taisha, I was looking at the data in these studies. What are the current arguments in defense of saturated fats? So um, these are arguments that I know because in the two and a half years that I've been out with my book, I've had, I have, um, I've seen what all the remaining arguments are now to saturated fats. Because this data, as we'll see later, this data, um, these clini this clinical trial data, which had long been sort of suppressed and ignored, has since been reckoned with in the last five years, as we'll discuss a little bit later. But we're, uh, what, I wanna, what I wanna talk about next is that these, this massive body of clinical trial research on the diet heart hypothesis, um, has, was basically, and for reasons that we'll, ex we'll explore later, has been ignored. Ignored and suppressed, not, uh, not reviewed, not cited by the dietary guidelines. Um, but in the last six years, uh, a number of researchers around the world have basically unearthed this data and gone back and reviewed it. Um, and so there are now at least a dozen systematic analyses and meta systematic reviews and meta-analyses on both the clinical trial and the observational data on saturated fats and heart disease. We heard about um, Dr. Harcombe's review of all of these in her PhD thesis. She's not alone. There are many researchers around the world who have looked now at this data and reevaluated it. The first one that came out, this was a meta-analysis um, that looked at the observational data, the prospective cohort studies. This was done by um, Ron Krause's team at University of California, Berkeley. This was really the first review like this to come out. Um, no significant evidence for concluding that dietary saturated fat is associated with an increased risk of um, coronary heart disease. So the next one, another is in the BMJ that looked at um, also on the observational data, also found no association. This is the one that um, sticks out as not agreeing with all the other ones, also as Dr. Har uh, Dr. Harko mentioned yesterday by uh, Darush Muzaffarian. Um, and he found that although he found a slight benefit of for consuming PUFA, which is polyunsaturated vegetable oils, if it replaces saturated fat. But saturated fat alone um, did not uh, cause heart disease according to his, um, this analysis. So I also think it's important to note because we've talked about conflicts of interest that Darush Mozafarian is on the scientific advisory board of Unilever, which is one of the largest vegetable oil companies in the world. 
Um, looking at both the observational and the clinical trial data, this is Andrew Mente's study. He's at McMaster's in Canada. He said there is insufficient evidence of any association in, um, between heart disease, saturated, uh, heart saturated or polyunsaturated fatty acids. This is the Chowdhury study. Um, this came out um, a couple of months before my book came out. It was um, partic it particularly caused controversy because it was um, the first one to look at the clinical trial data which is considered more rigorous, and it did not find an effect of saturated fats on um, cardiovascular events or cardiovascular mortality. There was a tremendous storm over this particular meta-analysis, and, and, um, and he was, Chowdhury was forced to change some of his, his uh, some of his analysis, but even in the reanalysis, he had the same findings in the end. Another one in the BMJ, looking again at the clinical trial data, no evidence uh, that saturated fats cause heart disease. Another one on the clinical trial data, um, this is by the Cochrane database. Um, Dr. Harcomb talked about this at length yesterday. Um, there was no, there was one significant effect found on cardiovascular events that turned out not to be statistically significant when a sensitivity analysis was done, according to Dr. Harcomb. There were all the other uh, findings were not significant, including the more important ones, which is do saturated fats affect cardiovascular mortality or total mortality, and the answer to that was no. Also on the RCT data, this was um, uh, this was a, a subpart of a larger paper uh, where they did a review of the randomized controlled clinical trial data, and they found no effect of saturated fats on heart disease. The diet heart hypothesis is the most tested hypothesis in the history of nutrition and disease. There's no greater, there's been no more money spent, no more clinical trials done, no more observational studies done on any other single hypothesis, and the results can be said to be null. They do not support the, the, this hypothesis. Having looked at the previous studies and now the studies that you've, you've, you've now gone through, uh, what would you be able to say was the, uh, what was the, if, what was the, looking at all of these uh, data, what was the response in respect of the studies and, 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 and the fact that we are here where we are here now, what are the current arguments in defense of the saturated fats? Yes, thank you. Um, well, as I started saying earlier, that I have been out with my book now for two and a half years, and so I have heard what the remaining arguments are against saturated fats, um, trying to defend the diet heart hypothesis. And I think there are two major ones that have emerged, which is it's saturated fats might not be so bad, but it really depends what you replace saturated fats with. And that as a line that the U.S. Dietary Guideline Committee has adopted. Um, but the reality of the evidence is that all these clinical trials, or the great majority of them, replace saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats, and, in, and which is the advice that we're being told to give in today. There are no experiments where people are said, replace saturated fats with sugar and junk food. Those don't exist. So, all of the clinical trial evidence shows that replacing saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats does not lower your risk of heart disease. So I think that's a false argument. The other argument is, well, we might give you uh, that saturated fats no longer cause heart disease, but it really depends what kind of saturated fatty acid you're eating. So there's saturated fats as a catch-all term. It refers to a number of different kinds of saturated fatty acids that come in different length chains, carbon chains. Um, so some are shorter, some are longer, some are in more present in dairy, others are present in coconut oil or palm oil, others are present in meat, but most foods are a combination of different kinds of saturated fatty acids. And the reality is that we have very little data, to, little to no data uh, on 
what are the effects of different saturated fatty acids. And the data that we have is only on soft endpoints, not hard endpoints. And this is the, this is the Menzik and Catan study is a, is a study that's most often cited to talk about the effects of individual saturated fatty acids. They could find a total of only 91 data points. That means only 91 people have ever been studied on that particular micro subject. Compare that to the over 75,000 people who have been studied on saturated fats collectively. If saturated fats collectively do not cause heart disease, it seems almost ludicrous to say, well, let's back into some argument about individual saturated fatty acids when the group overall has been found innocent. Now, in your, you, you've, uh, in your uh, summary, you refer to the uh, Canadian Heart and Stroke Foundation and their recommendations. Do you want to comment on that? Yes, I just want to say that this is the first instance that I know of anywhere in the world where a, an official body, this is the Canadian Heart and Stroke Foundation, the equivalent of our American Heart Association, has reevaluated the data, taken it into consideration, and they, in 2015, lifted their caps on saturated fats. So they no longer have a numerical cap you know, percent of calorie cap on saturated fats. So that was with regard to saturated fats. Do you have any view on the issue of, of uh, all fats rather than just saturated fats? So similarly, so I want to just explain the difference uh, in the data that we're going to talk about now. If you remember, in 1961, the guidance was to reduce saturated fats and replace them with polyunsaturated fats. The great majority of those experiments did not reduce total fats. They simply swapped out one kind of fat for another kind of fat. But they were what we would consider to be relatively high fat diets still. About 40% of their calories were fat. It was the type of fat that they were, uh, they were, me that they were measuring. So then in 1970, the American Heart Association expands its, uh, its guidelines to say, look, it's not just saturated fat, it's all fats that we must reduce. This is the beginning of the low-fat diet, which is to say we need to ratchet down consumption of all fats down to, it's been variously defined over the years, but anywhere between 25 and 35 percent of calories as, as fats in total. And the reasoning behind this was that fat has uh, nine calories per gram, more or less, compared to protein and carbohydrate. There's only three macronutrients, fat, protein, and carbohydrate. So fat has nine calories per gram, protein and carbohydrate have four to five calories per gram, and the reasoning was if we reduce fat, we will reduce calories. And so we will be able to combat obesity better with a low-fat diet. This was just a hypothesis, um, and there had been no tests of the low-fat diet at that time in 1970 when the American Heart Association recommended this. So where were the tests of the low-fat diet and what do they say? But here's the tests of the low-fat diet. Um, and this is not a comprehensive list. But these are the NIH-funded ones. Um, there were two NIH-funded ones on Boeing employees in Seattle. That was in 1997 and 2000. Then there was the Women's Health Initiative, which is the largest dietary trial ever undertaken on uh, nearly 49,000 women for seven years. That was a multi-center trial. And then there was the Pollitt Prevention Trial that looked at cancer. So overall, just NIH low-fat funded studies, more than 52,000 people studied on the low-fat diet. Um, and the results of those NIH-funded studies were, as Dr. Harcombe has already talked about the Women's Health Initiative yesterday, but no benefit for heart disease, no benefit for cancer of any kind, no benefit for obesity, no benefit for diabetes. The Dietary Alternative Study, um, no benefit, no benefit, no benefit. The B-FIT Study, no benefit, no benefit. Polyp Prevention Style, no benefit for any of those diseases. No benefit could be seen in the low-fat diet. And this is why I think sort of s probably surprising news to most people, but the 2015 Dietary Guideline Committee no longer recommends a low-fat diet. 
the low-fat diet is no longer the official advice in the United States. And they've done that, and the American Heart Association did the same thing in 2013. They discontinued any mention of limiting your total fat. And they did this because, they said, such diets generally are associated with dyslipidemia, hypertriglyceridemia. Hyper anyway, what this means is it gives you a heart attack. It, give, it worsens your risk of heart disease. It makes your triglycerides go up and your HDL go down. That is consistently seen in all these low-fat diet trials, that although they can lower LDL a little bit, which it seems to be a good thing, that's your bad cholesterol going down, they also cause your triglycerides to rise and your good cholesterol to drop. Both of those things are bad and increase your risk of a heart attack. So, as a result, the vice chair of the Dietary Guideline Committee said there is no conventional message to recommend low-fat diets. Low-fat diets are probably not a good idea, and they induce dyslipidemia. Oops, again, that means they increase your risk of a heart attack. 